Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video I'm going to talk about how to use environment variables. And I'm going to break this video down into three parts. First, I'll show you how to actually build an environment variable. Second, I'll show you how to go ahead and use that in a Power Apps Canvas apps. And third, how to use that in a Power Automate flow. But first, here's my intro video. So I'm in the Canvas App Studio, and the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and build our environment uh, variable solution. So over here, I go to the bottom, go to Solutions, and here I'm gonna click on New Solution. And in my new solution, I'm gonna give it the name Environment Variable. I'll leave everything else the same. Publisher, I can go put that in the default one. Options, I'll leave everything as is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on Create. And that is what it's going to do for the environment variable. It'll go ahead and build that any second now. What I do want to do is I'm going to use this scenario as an example, is that I'm going to uh, put in some company information. And in the company information, we're going to use that for two scenarios. One is um, in your Power Apps Canvas apps, you can put that as a footer, like the company name, company phone number, company address. You know That can be there for all your Canvas apps. And then each and every app, when you go ahead and add that, say the company name changes or the company address changes or the company phone number changes, you just go to this one central place, make that change, and it'll propagate that change across all the apps. So that's kind of the scenario that I'm working with, and that'll help you give some give you some ideas. Um, and then we'll replicate that in the, um, in the flow side as well. So now I'm gonna go into the environment variable and start adding some environments. So the first one I'll go ahead and do is I'll kind of give it the exact same things you would need for a company. You know, those things which are so recurring, but they come in again and again. Um, I'll put in company name. I'll put in company address and company phone numbers. And I'll show you how those helpful things can be in your apps. Each and every app which needs to have that, say, in the footer, or each and every email notifications through phone, uh, through flow that needs to have that on the footer. This is where you come and get it now. You don't have to keep adding it again and again. You just leverage this place over here. So come here, I go put on environment variable. And the first one that I'm going to do is company address. And description, I'm going to leave that as is, which is blank. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how um, you can use the default address and you can go ahead and add a current value over here. So I'll actually put both the same values. I'll put that in both over here. Um, so for, let's see, this is the company address. I'm going to put one Microsoft way. way Redmond Washington 98052 I'm going to copy that I'll paste it here I'm going to go ahead and save that next I'll go ahead and do that for company name I'll put the company name uh, here again it's another environment variable this is going to be company name leave the description as is I'm picking text I can do the default value. Um, default value for this one is going to be, uh, I'll put in Christian Family Consulting Service, comma, incorporated. Grab that, control C, control V, save it. And then finally, we'll go ahead and also add the company phone number. And I'll put that in, environment variable, company phone number, and there's no number, and the decimal number doesn't work for the phone, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the text over here. And then the phone number for that was 425-825-8080. Control C, Control V, save. And we are done with adding all our environment variables over here, all in this one place. Remember, um, it is an environment variable added in as a solution, so it is tied to that environment. But across the entire environment, I can call this again and again and again. So it's helpful, and hence the term environment variable. All right, let's now jump in and start building a fun app. So what I'm going to do is I'll come to apps. I'm going to click on new app. I'll click on canvas. And in canvas, we are going to, um, let's just go ahead and do a tablet layout. Go ahead and give it a name. Demo for environment variable. 
Save it. So the first thing is when we come over here is we need to actually make a connection to the environment variable. And that sometimes sounds a little you know, uh, confusing, but let's think about it. What happens is it's in an environment, we've added some variables, but in the back end, as far as the dataverse goes, there is actually a table. And in that table, all this information is being sent over here. So what we need to do is all said and done, just make a call and filter it. I'm gonna make a call to that table. In that table, I'm gonna say, get me the environment which uh, the environment variable which has this name and then it shows up over here but what i'll also do is i'll just get that table so there you can actually see all the environment labels you have so that way you can just you know see it from a gallery perspective over here so that's why in order for me to do that i need to search for something which is called as environment variables value so i'm going to do that and it's called environment variables values now there are certain situations where you would need the definition as well but this is just the beginning and just an introduction, so I'm only going straight with the environment variable values. But as we get more and when I build some more videos on this, I'll, I'll you know I'll show you when that definition is also required over there. So I come back over here now. I go ahead and insert a simple gallery. Change that gallery to uh, just the title. Okay, and then this gallery, I'm going to change that to leave it over there type into the environment variable values and there you go the three that we added all shows up over here and that's pretty nice right because this I intentionally added the gallery to show you that yes it is a solution and we're adding it one by one but in the back end all those one by one I just added into a dataverse table over there and this kind of helps you really stick in your mind so I just went and put in publish over here all right, now the question is, Daniel, how do I just go ahead and get one value? Because I want a very specific environment variable. Like for example, I just want to get the name of the company over here. How do I do that? So the first thing that you need to do is you got to go back to the solution over here. It's the solutions, go to the environment variables, and you need to get these names. Like make sure you get these names because uh, we are going to do some, fil um, some lookups and we're gonna say that, hey, go ahead and get me that environment variable, the, the value of the environment, enable, uh, environment variable whose display name is this or this or this. So you need to have that available over here. So that's why I'm coming in and I'm just making sure I got this information here and you do the same. So let's go back to our app. And now I'm just gonna put that into say a simple text. And I've shown you the first way is to go and grab that in the gallery. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you go ahead and Put in that formula so the formula goes just like this we type in lookup and in the lookup you go ahead and grab the environment variable values then you hit comma and in the comma you're going to search for something called as environment variable definition so you come over here environment variable definition you click that in and squiggly line which means i gotta put a dot and over here i'm going to get the display name so display name showing up right there and display name, it is saying, well, there's three of them. So which one do you need? So that's when I go ahead and do equal. And I go ahead and put that in double quotes. And I say, this time, I want you to get me just the company name. And I'm typing that in exactly how I put that in the solution name over there. The solutions display name, that's exactly what I'm doing. Close it, hit dot, I get the value. And then any second now, that name should show up over here. Boom, right there, it is there. And it just took a few seconds, but it went ahead and grabbed that. But this is how you do it. Again, let's take a closer look at the formula. It's using lookup. We are referencing that environment variable values, which again, remember, is just the table in the dataverse over there. I'm going ahead and getting the environment variable definition, its display name. And then finally, I tell you that's the value, which is the company name. And I put the dot value. Now, that is one of the reasons why I've also, in when I was adding each of those um, variables over here in my solution. Um, I've gone ahead and done a combination of both, the putting it as the default value and also putting it as the current value because Power Apps tends to lean more towards the current value side over here. Flow will leave more on the default value side. So that's why I put in both is I make sure I add one of these um, and I also put that in the default value. But just kind of pay attention to this little information which is very important when you're going to take the solution and move from one environment to the other environment. It says that remove this value before exporting it, uh, exporting if it shouldn't be used in other environments. So kind of keep that in mind 
that uh, that's a very simple, but it's a very important message that it does. If it shouldn't be used in any other environments, which means as you're doing an application lifecycle management, moving it from one environment to the other environment, keep that, but remove this one over here. Got it? Cool. So what I'm going to show you now is an example of how we can go ahead and put this in, in these apps over here. So what I do is now, this is something which is very simple, and you will understand that is now that I've shown you how to do this lookup for one of them, if you've already caught my drift over here, we're gonna do it the look, same lookup for all three of them, but I'm gonna add that to a variable and I'm gonna do it at the app on start. So check this out. I come over here, it's the app on start, and app on start, I'm gonna put all of these, I'm basically gonna go call all three of those variables and I'll do that in a concurrent fashion so it makes it a lot more easier. So the first one, I already got it over here, so I'm not gonna write that again. I'm just gonna go copy it. Grab this, zoop, control C, control V, come back over here, right there, and we've already got the first one. Now I put a comma, and what I'll do is I'll come, I usually hit my shift and enter, so that gets me to the next line, but I'm gonna do a control V again. I'm gonna paste it, and this time I'm gonna change that name from the company address. Now, was it company address? I don't know. Let me go check because it's very important that we have all this. Oh, yeah, it is company address. The display name was company address. So that's what I got to keep that in mind. So I come back over here and I type in company address. And I go another comma, shift, enter, control V. And then finally, I go and type in the company phone number. Again, was the P and the N for the number or the all uppercase? Let me go double check. Yep, C, P, and N were all uppercase. So I'm just, you know, kind of make sure that this is all right because I don't want to spend too much time troubleshooting it when the mistake was just simple text over here. Now I've gone ahead and done that, which means it was an app on start. So I got to come to the app. I got to right click, run on start. And then finally, the end piece is very simple. For example, I'm just going to get a, a label. I'll drop it over here. I'll expand it nicely all the way. And you all know this. So I'm going to just type in the variables now. It's company... Um, how did I put that? Did I use variables? Aha. Uh -huh. So what I want to do is I'm setting those as variables. So I totally forgot adding that piece. So I'm going to do the set um, company name bar, company name bar, comma, close that, go to the next one. Got so excited. I went ahead and completely missed adding this. So company address bar that's a bracket that opens over here so I got to close it over there and then finally come back here set and come to company phone number bar close that and that takes care of that so I can now come back here right click run on start now I can pick this up I pick up where I left off so I got the company name Got that, now I'm gonna put in one ampersand space. I'll put double quotes, but in here, I wanna put these spaces and do that. So as you can see, it's already showing up here, which is pretty slick. So I got the company name, now let me go ahead and add um, the same thing for uh, company, let's see, just do the address. Then again, um, ampersand, and I can actually just copy this whole section over here. Did that and that's the company address and then finally I can end with the company phone number and there you go now this can be your footer or downstairs you know down information which you want to put which is static but if for whatever reason it changes I can go ahead and I'll make the change right over here in any of these ones and it'll propagate across all the apps in that environment a one-stop shop place to make changes over there. And that's the beauty of the environment variables over here. It's just neat, simple, and as I showed in the slide deck, you don't have to have any you know, knowledge to go and even work on the Canvas apps. You just go to that solution over there, find that solution, which is the environment variables, and just change those three uh, sections, and you're done. So that is how we do it on the Power App side. Now let's replicate this on the uh, Power Automate flow side as well, because an example would be you want to put this in the signature of each and every app over here. Uh, so each and every email notification that's going on. And this is, again, the same concept. 
Now, what I like about the environment variables is, okay, if you know the situations, especially when some of the videos that you know uh, I've done, is if I want to send data from Power Automate over to Power Flow, you go ahead and you know build a, a flow. You go ahead and attach that as a um, into your app, and then you're sending it right? inside the flow. Uh, flow, you got the you know into the brackets. You're sending that information. Um, the, I don't have to do that when it's called the environment variable because the data is already there. So I'm not sending anything from Power Apps. The same way we do for the flows and the function thing. We don't have to do that. It is all in there in that environment as variables, and both Power Automate and Power and the uh, uh, Power Apps Canvas can see that. So I just love that piece of it. It's one central place, and I don't have to make any calls. Um, you know, from Power Apps or send that over to Flow over there. All right, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to automate a cloud flow and I'm going to call that as um, environment variable. And what I'll do for this one is I'm going to let's skip it for now. This is going to be an on start. So, variable. So I'll manually go ahead and start that. That's the trigger I'm going to use. No adding over here. But now we're going to start with some of the interesting things. So I'm going to actually start off with um, initializing some variables. Initializing variable is basically how you start. So I'm going to click over here. I go to variables. And since my variables are um, uh, text, I'm just going to use string over here. So I'll go to the string. And in here, I'm going to try to follow the same naming convention that I did in the Power Apps. So I basically had three variables over there. I had the company address, company name, and the company phone number, putting the exact same thing over here. Company address bar. Now, it's important that in some of the Microsoft documentation whose links I put over there, they have actually said that go ahead and put in the name, the actual name of the uh, variable. What they're referencing is go ahead and grab this name. You don't really have to do that. You just put in the name. The advice though they gave was legitimate. They're saying that try to maintain consistency of which environment it is um, with the variable name over there. So it is a very legitimate um, uh, you know, explanation. They're giving it that way, but you don't really have to do it. As long as you know what that variable is and what it means as an environment variable, we're good. And so I just kept it very simple. My name is actually almost similar to what the environment name is minus the uh, you know, spaces, uh, but it helps me, so I'm, I'm good with that. All right, if you see any of my videos, you know that I'm just a big fan of changing the labels over here. So I'm going to call this as initialize company address. And we'll be done over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, add um, list. So I'm going to basically now go ahead and do the exact same thing we did in Power Apps, but we're going to do it with a flow style. And remember, in Power Apps, we did lookup. And in the lookup, we had to go ahead and tell exactly which one variable it was. If you've already sensed it, I'm doing the exact same. Now, watch, I'm going to actually go and say um, list of records. I'm going to grab the list. And in uh, Power Apps, we did the lookup. Over here, I'm going to do a query. So I got to first actually tell what I'm looking for. So that's the same thing. Environment variable uh, definitions. That's what I'm grabbing. But in the uh, filter query by, you got to use a very specific name and that name is called a schema name without any spaces whatsoever you need to put in schema name equals so i'm just so that i don't make any mistakes i'm actually going to go ahead and copy that we can take an you know zoom in and take a look at it so that's what it is schema name lowercase no spaces in between all right and then now now i actually need that name the legitimate name so right now we're going to do the one for the company address. So I got to come over here and in the company address, see over here, I can't do the highlight and copy. So I got to actually go click on it. And then here I go ahead and highlight it and I do a control C to copy. Let me cancel out of that. And here I go my power automate. I've already got the one single code so I can paste it, close the one single code over here. And that is basically how we did that piece over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply that to uh, the variable, the variable that I just in initialized, I'm going to go ahead and apply it to over, that, uh, over here. So I got to come back again to variables. In the variables, I need to set the variable value. Go ahead and grab this. And here, I am going to grab it and put in something called as the default value. So here, scroll down, scroll down, not the display, but it is the default value. So right there, it showed up. And then it puts in the apply to each. This automatically happens. 
don't worry about it. It's designed to do it this way. And also don't worry about it grabbing more information because remember in the list records, we've already done the filter query for that, all right? So don't worry about it. What you did was fine. Um, and if you walked along with me, then it's fine because it's gonna do that for you as well, all right? But it's important that you walk along with me because if you're trying to just view it and say that, oh, I gotta put this in an apply to each, so let me come over here, put an apply to each, then it's gonna put in an apply to each inside an apply to each. So follow along with me step by step. And I, each and every of my videos I tell people is that don't just view it and replicate it, follow along with me because this is what happens. We did a set variable and the moment we added a value over there, which was a default value, it went ahead and didn't apply to each. So just follow along, all right? Uh, let me just go ahead and make some nice, um, you know, just basically rename that. So I'm gonna say apply to each for company address. And then I'll say same thing over here, list records for company address. Now what I wanna do is, well, I'll save it, but I gotta go ahead and do this um, twice again for the other ones as well. I got the company address, I need the company name and I need the company phone number. So I'm gonna run them in parallel. So I'll come over here and um, just so that you know what the process is, I'm gonna go ahead and follow along this one and walk through the other one step by step. So you see it, but you can actually go ahead and do some other fun stuff like grouping them together, um, doing some copy and paste and speed up the process. But since this is a tutorial, I'm gonna actually walk through step by step. So the first thing we had in the variable, like we did over here, is we went ahead and initialized the variable. And this variable was a string one. And we're gonna call this now as the company, company phone number variable. And in the company phone number variable, I'm gonna leave that string as blank, come back over here, adding another actions, common data service, list, records, list records over here is straight back to environment variable definitions, but we wanna make sure that the filter query is the only one to make it faster. I'm gonna copy this one schema. More than likely that prefix, which is the CR818, CR818 will be the same since I've added the three of them, just to be safe. Let's just go ahead and confirm that. So I come back over here and this time I'm getting the company, what am I getting, company? Um, phone number, let's do company company phone number. So I come back over here, I go to company phone number and that's what it is, CR818. So like I said, we confirmed they're more, uh, the prefixes are more than likely the same, but never hurts to check in, you know, uh, verify. So here now, inside the code, remember it's inside the code. So if you, you know, click outside, you'll see that I still have the two codes. I paste that in and I'll go ahead and just give some, you know, rename these, initialize the company, um, company, come on, Daniel. Phone number, rename, company, phone number. And then we go ahead and now set the value of the variable, variable, setting the variable value. This time I'm going to add, you know, if you notice over here, this is why I like to do it in the parallel ways because there's no confusion. There over here, I could have, and you know I would have done that sometimes, is I would have accidentally selected the company address one instead of the company name. Because if that was doing this um, in a serial order, doing one by one, I would have even grabbed the wrong uh, you know, uh, variable that I initialized. But now, since I'm going in this step, I have no choice but to select only this one variable. So it kind of helps me, um, you know, not make any mistakes by selecting the wrong variable. So kind of like this uh, running the uh, uh, steps in parallel. And this is, uh, actually we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So here I gotta go ahead and initialize the value by getting in the default value, the default value of this one. So this is the list company phone number records list company phone number records and I'm gra grabbing the default value and it went ahead and did an apply to each. This apply to each, we're gonna rename it as apply to each for company phone number. Did I rename it? Yeah, we'll leave that one as is, just to make sure I got that in. Company phone number, this is company address. Make sure company phone number, so we're good over here. And we just save that so I don't make any you know, don't lose my the work that I've done. 
and then last is we're going to add another parallel branch for the final one is variable this is going to be initialize the variable and this one is going to be for the company name so initialize variable um, initialize company name and now I'm trying to maintain some consistency company name bar string now we go to our CDS in our CDS we're going to list company records in the list company records I got to find the environment variable definition environment variable definitions go ahead and do a filter query but I'm just going to copy and paste that one over here and this is company name awesome and click on that so it collapses click over here set the value variable they're going to set the variable uh, variable again beautiful because now it's in this parallel branch which means that we only see one which is the company name no chance of making a mistake over here grabbing the default value adds it into a parallel uh, apply to each again not concerned because it's not going to go ahead and spend too much time running the uh, apply to each because there's only one why is it one because we went ahead and added uh, the query from the list of records just love it when a plan comes together come any name what is this away what did i do I made that mistake you didn't even tell me that come on company name list of records list company name records i'm just going to save that and then finally um, i'm going to go ahead and uh, let's just put that in an email so i'll use my outlook in my outlook i'm just going to use the outlook there i'm going to say send send an email version 2 i'll just go ahead and send that to myself just type a name there you, that's right here and i'm going to say testing environment variable i'm going to put in some text i'm going to say hi there and i'll grab some funny text hi there right here our email, email service and then i put in the three variables now that i'm outside the parallel branching over here now i can see all three variables you see that so that's, that's how it was this company name with space this bracket company address space oh this colon full colon and then company phone number do that let me just go ahead and open up my outlook over here as well keep that ready for some email notifications to come through oh boy i got a lot over here I'm going to right click, mark as red. Yeah, sure. All that. that way I can just excitedly wake, uh, look forward for the next one that's coming through. And we are going to do our final test. I'll do manually since it's the first one. Save and test. And then I got to run it. It's saving first. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Continue. Run the flow. Done. So far it ran. Let's see everything all the branches are running everything was check 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 everything is good oh i heard the ding that's a good sound and then there you go see that hi there oh, wow. and here can be now your footer even for your emails over here because we made the calls we made it working and all of them is showing up over here so wasn't that neat i went and walked you through all the three scenarios over there we first went ahead and created a solution for the environments over there we went ahead and added the um, the three environment variables in and then we went ahead and even populated the environment variables and then we made environment calls both in the Power Apps Canvas app and in the Power Automate flow over there and the process was almost the same right because we did a lookup in Power Automate I mean in, in the Canvas apps uh, but we did a, um, a list in the flow but we used the query over there and that all works it's process is almost the same but here it is. Now you know how to go ahead and build these environment level variables. And you can call that across all the apps in the environment. And it has the flexibility that since it's a solution, you can export and import that into the other environments or even the other tenants over there. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep power apping.